Welcome back to Vancouver. Well, no matter where you are in this country, the biggest question on everybody's mind is, which way is the economy going to go? And there's nobody with a bigger stake in the answer to that than Vancouver's Jimmy Pattison. He's Canada's fifth richest man, and at 84 years old, he oversees a $7 billion empire of everything from supermarkets to museums. What began as a single store in Vancouver is now a worldwide enterprise employing more than 34,000 people. And joining me now is the legendary Jimmy Patterson. Mr. Patterson, so good to have you here. Good. Well, thank you. It is said that the sun never sets on the Patterson Empire because you have got companies right around the world. From that very unique perspective that you have, what are we not thinking about that we should be thinking about? I think that uh, I think there's not many places that we aren't focusing on. Uh, the, the, you know, the big movements in the, is in Asia and the east from here, and uh, there's a lot of activity, and and uh, we're doing pretty good. Should I think. that be our focus, Jimmy? That we should be doing everything we can to get into and connect with the Asian market at this point. I think so. I, I I'm a big supporter of of more activity over there on behalf of us. I think we can uh, we can do more there, but you know it takes a little time. The culture is very different than how we do business there. You know. Speaking of that, I'm wondering what your perspective is on this whole business of, of pipelines coming from Alberta, moving Alberta crude through British Columbia to uh, the BC coast, specifically for that Asian market. Both the government of the current government of British Columbia and the opposition in British Columbia have said basically no to the Northern Gateway Pipeline. Are they on the wrong side of history or is this the right move for British Columbia? Well, if you're talking about British Columbia, uh, there is a lot of resistance uh, here for tankers on the coast. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and then, of course, anything to do with crossing the rivers and the streams where the fish go to spawn is a big deal. So it's a, it's a very difficult uh, call here. Uh, but, but if you take from Canada's point of view, it certainly would be good if we could get our products to the West Coast. But when you go through British Columbia, you've got a, a lot of important native issues. You certainly got the fishing issues. You've got the tanker issues. You've got the tourist issue, which is a big part of our, our world here in BC. So it's a very difficult call. I want to bring you, get your perspective on this. You know, Mark Carney, the departing yeah. governor of the Bank of Canada, and Jim Flaherty, the finance minister, both said at various times that their complaint against Canadian businesses is that they are sitting on hordes of cash and that they're not putting that dough into the game. Are they right in saying that? I think so, but you've you got to understand uh, the uncertainty in the world. We've just been through very significant downturn where a lot of people were very frightened including a lot of companies and including uh, the financial institutions and there's a lot of damage done there and and it's, it takes time to have the confidence and uh, particularly when you have the debt that's, uh, that's involved with the United States and Europe when you've got countries like that who are the leaders uh, particularly the Americans and uh, the issues that, uh, that uh, they have in Europe, there's a lot of reasons to hold back and uh, be careful. Because some people have said, you know, if, if the Canadian companies who are sitting on all this cash would put it on the table, we might be able to afford our own resources. And I'm thinking, for example, yeah. development in the oil sands in Alberta. Uh, and, and do you think, though, that when you take a look at the oil sands, obviously we've got a tough call as a country coming up. Yeah. Do we allow the Chinese to take over Nexen as maybe a first step? Or is there enough capital in this country owned by Canadian companies that could develop the oil sands if we decided to put that skin in the game? I can't answer that question, whether it's all in Canada, but certainly, usually capital comes when there's an opportunity that looks pretty reasonably secure. In that case, what's your own personal feeling about because you do a lot of business with the Chinese. What about the, the idea of uh, the Chinese state oil company buying in the oil patch? Are you worried about that? Well, um, I, I think that when a government, any government, buys any asset, their whole objectives are very different 
than yours and mine or anybody else that's, that's in business uh, because they're, first of all, their cost of capital is different. And secondly, their horizons, getting a return on that capital are different. So it's a very different cap when you talk about bringing in sovereign money offshore and then add to the fact that the country may not have the same values that we have. I don't mean monetary values. I mean philosophical values and all the other things you know about. So it's a, it's a very uh, touchy deal. I, I want to ask you a personal question because I think a lot of people might look at you and say, boy, there's a guy who didn't start off with a whole lot who did really, really well. At your age, you work seven days a week. You never take a holiday, or at least you say every day is a holiday because right. you enjoy yeah. what you do. Right. What's the thrill for you? Is that, do you ever get to the point where you've made enough money that you've made uh, enough deals? What drives you? Well, you, you don't work for money. I mean, uh, I've never worked for money, um, but usually if you do a good job, any person, the money uh, will find them. Because if you really are good at what you do, and have a passion for it, and you're honest and work hard, uh, usually things will turn out reasonably good. Health is a big issue, and being fortunate enough to be you know, raised in British Columbia and Canada is a big plus. You know, than if I was born in Africa somewhere, it makes a big difference. Generally speaking, are you optimistic about the prospects for British Columbia and Canada, or are you worried? No, I'm not worried. Nobody can screw up British Columbia. <laughs> I mean, this is a great province. It's, it's, uh, we, were, we are so blessed with so many good things, and right here, and we've got ports, and, and they're close to Asia, we're close to the Americans, and we just couldn't have it better than we had. We're a very fortunate province and a, and a very fortunate country. I can't imagine having a better neighbor than the United States. Uh, and they have been, been a huge positive influence over the years. And uh, now we've got this whole Asia opportunity coming up. Uh, we just, uh, I'm very positive on the future here. Well, I think it's safe to say that British Columbia was pretty fortunate to have you around as well. Uh, well, it's been very good to me, and I'm most grateful to the good Lord and to the po and democracy and free enterprise system that make it possible for guys like me to, uh, to uh, accumulate and grow. But, you know, we never worry about that. We are interested in building and having a good time. Well, you're certainly having that. Jimmy Patterson, thank you so much for taking the time. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you. it. Okay.